most amazing creatures from Norse mythology. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tall Tanic. I'm your host, Alexa. So, Norse mythology is incredibly complex. We could never get through it in just one video. So today is just the highlights of the coolest creatures that exist in Norse mythology. Before we get into it, if you've seen Marvel's depiction of Odin, then you know that he only has one eye. But do you know how that happened? That answer, coming up later. The Norse Gods. Let's introduce you to some of the Norse royalty, because these blue bloods get a lot of mention in today's video. They oversee all the activities of the creatures of the cosmos. You will find them governing from the celestial fortress of Asgard, enforcing rules, causing chaos, upholding justice, and being watchmen of the cosmos. First up, Odin. He is the most magical and wisest of the gods, probably the Norse poster child for the gods. Thor. This fiery-tempered, hammer-wielding, strong man defends Asgard. Thor is the god of thunder. Then there's Loki, the trickster of the bunch, Freyr and Freya, twins, and the god and goddess associated with love, fertility, rain, and sunshine. Baldr, one of the most popular gods with youthful ways. Heimdall, the watchman. Tyr, who upholds the law and justice of the cosmos. Idun, the protector of the apples of eternal youth. Now it's time to meet some more fearsome creatures. Elves. Elves live in the realm of Alfheim, governed by god Freyr. Their appearance is tall, slim, demigods with pale skin and hair, and more beautiful than the sun. Elves are often thought of as tricksters stirring up trouble, but they keep themselves away from the affairs of humans, for the most part, only causing or curing illness on occasion, and completely on their own whim. They are morally ambivalent, and it's difficult to say whether they are good or bad folk. Draugr Norse mythology is complete with its own version of zombies. The Draugr are the living undead, with few upgrades. They have superhuman strength, can increase their size at will, can enter your dreams for revenge and torment you, or indirectly kill their victim by driving them to insanity. They're found in their own graves, protecting the treasure they were buried with. It's no surprise that the evil and greedy or unpopular people were more likely to become Draugr. Dwarves. Spartelheim is the home of the dwarves, which is a place on Earth. A kind of labyrinth of underground mines and forges where they make things. There's actually no mention of dwarves being short in Norse mythology. That's a modern depiction. However, they were referred to as lesser beings, which may have been misinterpreted as short. Dwarves are responsible for forging many artifacts, like Thor's hammer, Odin's ring and sword, and a ship of Freyr's. Fenrir. Fenrir was the son of the god Loki and the giantess Engroboda. He grew too big too quickly and became troublesome, wreaking havoc across the nine worlds, so the gods of Asgard, who raised him, decided to chain him up. They knew he wouldn't submit to being chained up, so they pretended they were playing a game with him to see how strong he was. This is a reference to Ragnarok, which is the Norse mythology's reference to the end of the world. That is supposedly when Fenrir will break from his chains and get his revenge. CRS. To call a CRS a creature would be grossly unfair, as archaeologists have uncovered tombstones that have belonged to Scandinavian CRSs. These revered women from Norse or Germanic mythology were highly revered. They held an authoritative role in society and were often buried with wands, seeds, or potions, along with other high-status items. Freya, who we mentioned earlier, is often associated with CRSs. Jotnar. The Jotnar are known as giants of the north, but are actually the same size as humans, and they're a difficult group of creatures to define. They are in conflict with the gods often, and are chaotic spirits of darkness and winter, and considered devourers. Trolls actually fall under Jotnar. Fossigrim. The Grim, or Fossigrim in full, is a water spirit who is known for his brilliant talent at playing the fiddle. This musical creature mimics the forest sounds, water, and wind with great skill. With a generous and rather particular offering, you might convince him to teach you how to play. He enjoys smoked mutton stolen from the neighbor's storehouse four Thursdays in a row, or even more specific, a white goat thrown with its head turned away into a waterfall that flows northwards. 
Valkyries. Most people know the name Valkyries from the famous orchestral number by Wagner called Ride of the Valkyries from countless film scores, but few know what a Valkyrie really is. So Valkyrie are the elegant maidens found guiding the slain to Valhalla in many Renaissance paintings. They are Odin's female helping spirits, but not quite as simple as the image depicts. The Valkyrie were actually responsible for a more sinister side. Their name, translated, means choosers of the slain. Their role included choosing who lives and who dies, not just who reached Valhalla. Jormungandir. Translated, Jormungandir means the Midgard serpent. He encircles the earth, holding everything in place. He is the middle child of Loki and the giantess Angrobota, along with siblings Fenrir and Hel. Odin allegedly took Jormungandir and cast him into the ocean, where he grew and grew until he could grasp his tail and surround Midgard. In the final showdown, Ragnarok will begin when Jormungandir releases his tail and leaves the ocean to poison the sky. He'll then seek out his arch enemy, Thor, who will slay him, but at the same time be poisoned by Jormungandir's venom. A pact of destruction. Huldra. The Huldra is a part of the group of Ra that are protectors and are the wardens of the forest. The female Huldra are seductive and beautiful, with a strange twist. Their backs are covered in bark, with a long tail of cow also covered in bark. They can disguise themselves as human females to pass through the world of men, and can maintain the illusion until someone sees their tail. The reason for the disguise is to lure young single men to the forest and keep them as slaves, lovers, or to just eat them. Sleipnir. Sleipnir is the trusty steed of Odin. This eight-legged horse is the offspring of the stallion Svalthafari and Loki. Loki was disguised as a mare at the time of conception. Look, we didn't say the Norse cosmos wasn't complicated, and here are some more complications. So the messenger of the gods is Hermothir, who rode Sleipnir to hell. This was to bargain for the release of Baldr after he had been killed by the mistletoe launched by his blind brother, Hothor. Hugin and Munin. These two creatures are a pair of ravens that basically serve as Odin's spies, bringing him news of the affairs of men and keeping an eye on the gods as they fly about Midgard. Hugin is the Norse word for thought, and Munin the word for mind, and could be a metaphor for Odin casting out his thoughts and mind in a kind of meditation of trance to observe others. But Odin does not fear they will not return one day. I guess if they did, you might say he'd be absent-minded. Kraken. The Kraken is a crazy sea creature with a ton of wild and weird character traits, so let's dive right in. These gigantic octo squids live off the shores of Norway and Greenland and are thought to be so big they can be mistaken for an island. However, if you stood on a Kraken posed as an island, the Kraken would sink down drowning you and eating you. As it rises to the ocean surface, it would cause large whirlpools that would wreck ships. Ratatoskir. Here comes a complicated tale. The Ratatoskir, drill tooth or boar tooth, is a squirrel. That was the simple part. So Ratatoskir runs up and down the world tree, taking messages up to the eagle and down to the serpent. Apparently, this is to cause trouble between the two by spreading gossip and rumors. This causes the eagle and the serpent to attack the tree, which ends up being a positive thing by rejuvenating the tree through a cycle of decay and rebirth. Mare. This freaky monster is the bringer of bad dreams, and he sits on top of his victims at night while they sleep. Now, mares are formed by the souls of living people leaving their bodies at night, like demons. Occasionally, these were the souls of normal people, generally young adults, who became mares when their spirits wandered. But mostly, it was witches. It's a common idea in Norse mythology that souls wander at night. In fact, Odin is worried that when his soul wanders, it won't return one day. Trolls. There are two kinds of trolls in Norse mythology, the large ugly ones and the small ugly ones. The larger trolls live in forests and mountains, while the smaller gnome-sized trolls live underground in deep caverns and caves. The boulders that are dotted over the Scandinavian landscape are thought to be the work of trolls. They are trolls that have been turned to stone by exposing themselves to the sun, and others were used as weapons. Trolls are not highly intelligent creatures and can be quite evil. However, they can be kind but only in exchange for a favor. All right, all right, that's a ton of mythology so far, and we still have a little bit more to go. 
But before we get there, we have to talk about Odin. Many people think that he probably lost his eye in battle, right? But that's not true. He lost his own eye by taking it out himself and giving it to Mimir, the guardian of the Well of Eternal Wisdom. In exchange for his eye, Odin was allowed to drink from the well, and so he became all-knowing. What do you think? Was it worth it? 1. Norns The Norns create and control fate, even the fate of the gods. They are women that appear at the birth of a being and cast wooden lots to weave the person or god's thread of fate. They physically weave a piece of cloth or carve symbols into the wood. The Norns seem to have the final say in the eyes of the Norse culture. The belief was that fate was cold-hearted and blind, with no one successfully imploring the Norns to change their fate. Norns are the official caretakers of the Tree of Life. This is the tree that holds the nine worlds of Norse mythology. Their care cannot make the tree become eternal, only slowing the death of the tree, showing the strong Norse belief that everything eventually comes to an end, and that end is Ragnarok. Wow.